Hey guys, I hope you're all doing really well this week. This is another motherboard. And as you can see with the bubble wrap and the sticker, this is from the same guy in the local shop who I bought the last two from. So this is a Dell Vostro 15 3568 laptop motherboard. It's not powering on just the way we like them. And it costs 29 euros. And this is what it looks like. Now I'm gonna do the same as usual here. I'm gonna take a few pictures, get it onto the screen. And we're going to have a look at how we're going to get this back up and running again. So why don't you come along for the ride? This is what our motherboard looks like after I scanned it in. I've done a quick visual inspection. I don't see any problems on the board. There's no signs of damage or burns or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start where we always start, at the DC in jack. Now, can anybody spot where that might be? Well, it's very clear on this one. So if you look over here, we'll see DC in. And that is where our power comes onto the board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here. I'm going to take a few measurements in diode mode. Just verify there's no short in the input section. If you can verify that there's no shorts, I'm going to bring power to it from my DC power supply. I've zoomed in on my DC input connector so we can get a close look at it here. Now I do have a schematic for this but I prefer to try and work things out myself first and then refer to the schematic just to verify everything that I'm doing is correct. It's better habit to be in because you won't always have a schematic and it's better to be able to work on your own. So let's do that now. We have one, two, three, four, five, six pins on this. And as you can see, this one here is marked as being number one. So let's mark in the numbers on those. So what are we seeing? Well, we're seeing that pins one and two are connected together. And they connect to this track which goes onto this first MOSFET here. Pin three doesn't seem to be connected to anything on this side of the board at least. And similar with pin four, they're on their own. And pins five and six are connected together to this same track which seems to be connected to ground. So on the basis of this, and of course the fact that it says DC in 1 here, I'll make the assumption that that's ground, and we have our 19.5 volts coming in here. Following our 19.5 volts onto the motherboard, we see that it comes onto this track and works its way up to this MOSFET right here. So that would seemingly be our first input MOSFET. As I scroll up, you can see that there's quite a long bit of track between this MOSFET and our second MOSFET, but that's the path it takes. And then once it gets through the second MOSFET, you can see it should come out here. And that goes on to a current sense resistor. And then after the current sense resistor, it's going all over the place. It's going out here and it's going down here on a very thick track. So I would assume that this is the usual configuration of us having one input MOSFET here, then we have a second input MOSFET, and then a current sense resistor, and this should then be our main 19.5 volt power rail. And I'm going to quickly consult with my schematic to verify everything I've said there is correct. So if we look here, we have pin 5 and 6 on the schematic, they're joined together and connected to ground. So that's what I had here, 5 and 6 ground. Pin 4, if we follow along here, it is actually connected and it's functioning as the PSID for the adapter. Pin 3 is not connected at all, but pin 1 and 2 are joined together and they are our DC in. So what we can see is if we follow along this path here, we have a number of parallel capacitors and we have a diode somewhere here for protection. It's badged as DC in at this point, and the first component in line is PU4301, and that corresponds to PU4301. I'm sorry, I'm after drawing the path over it, but trust me, that is a tree. So this is the first component in line, which is a P-channel MOSFET. After that, it becomes labeled AD positive, and then it goes to another part of the schematic. Let me see if I can find that here. AD plus, okay, yeah, so here it is. So AD plus then comes on to PQ4410. So let's see if we can find PQ4410. Well, you can see the marking up there. So this is our first MOSFET coming onto the second MOSFET, and the second MOSFET is PQ4410, and that corresponds to this right here. After our 19.5 volts comes through this, it is then connected to PR4426. And that is 
PR4426. I really got to stop drawing over the markings. Let me just remove that for the moment. So PR4426 is this current sense resistor right here. And then this is our main power rail. Okay, next I want to quickly confirm that there's no short on the input section. So I introduce my multimeter in diode mode. I place my red probe to ground and place my black probe to the DC input jack right here, pins 1 and 2. So when I place it here, I find that it measures 0 0.175. So there's no short at the input jack itself. Okay, so we've no short up to the first MOSFET, so I need to check to make sure there's no short between the two MOSFETs. So again, in diode mode, I place my black probe to the drain pin of the first MOSFET, and I find that we measure 1.936. So there's no short at this point either. And the last check I'm going to carry out at this point is just to measure that there's no short after the second MOSFET here. So again, I place my probe to my current sense resistor, and when I measure there, I measure 0 0.491. So that all seems good. There's no short at our current sense resistor either. Now, it was pointed out in the comments last week that it, this is probably a good opportunity to check the two input MOSFETs to make sure that they're not internally shorted as well. So with my multimeter still in diode mode, I place my red probe to the drain pin and my black probe to the source pin and I find that it measures 0 0.530. So that's fine. There's no short from drain to source. I measured the other MOSFET also and measured 0 0.530 across 8 from drain to source as well. Now this isn't meant to be an exhaustive test for shorts by any means. You could certainly go around to all of the inductors and check for shorts at those points as well on the secondary power rails. But what I'm trying to do here is just make sure from a safety point of view that before I connect in my DC power supply that there's not an obvious short that's going to draw a huge amount of current and possibly cause more harm. I'm happy enough that there's no serious short in the input section. So I'm going to show you how I injected power onto this motherboard. I didn't get a power adap adapter with this motherboard so what I'm going to do is use my own DC power supply to bring power onto the motherboard. So let me introduce my power supply right here. I set it to 19.5 volts and then I solder one wire to ground and then I solder another wire to my DC input jack. And that's how I bring power onto this motherboard. So let me show you what happened when I did that. These are my jumper wires connected to the board. So I've got my black wire connected to ground and I've got my red wire connected to my DC input jack. I've set it to 19.5 volts. And as you can see, it's drawing between two and about six milliamps. It looks as if it's trying to start up and then shutting down something. It has that look about it. See the way it's staying on two, jumping up to six and then coming back down. So it seems like it's detecting a fault and shutting down. But what I'm gonna do here is take some measurements from the board and we're gonna progress from there. We need to find out where our 19.5 volts is going. We're injecting it in at pins one and two right here. Now we tracked the path of that earlier on, which should go as follows. Straight up to the first MOSFET, through the first MOSFET and onto the second MOSFET, through the second MOSFET onto the current sense resistor, and then onto our main power rail. So we should be able to measure 19 point volts all the way along at this point. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and fast track it. I'm going to measure here and see if we have 19.5 volts on our main power rail. Just one quick question, guys. What do you all think of the lines that I draw in on the board here? Does that make it easier? Should I leave them on throughout or does that just start getting confusing as more stuff is drawn onto the board? Write down in the comments below what you think. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to take a measurement at this current sense resistor. I have my multimeter in volts DC. I place my black probe to a ground. The nearest ground is just that screw hole right there. And I place my red probe to the current sense resistor. And there I measure 19.5 volts. So it looks like our 19.5 volts is making it from our DC input through our first MOSFET, through our second MOSFET, and our main power rail is available. So the question is, where does it go from here? Well, our 19.5 volts obviously goes out to all of the secondary circuits, but the next thing we need to check on is to see if our 3.3 volts always on and our 5 volts always on are present. So that's what I'm going to look at next. 
Now, from having worked on similar motherboards, I've already identified which IC is responsible for generating the 3.3 volts and 5 volts always on power. But if I didn't have that experience, how could I work out which IC is responsible for generating these voltages? Well, there's a block diagram in the schematic for these motherboards that will tell you which ICs are responsible for generating which voltages. And as we can see right in the middle here, we have this one that accepts a voltage in either from the battery or the charger, and it generates a 3.3 output voltage which goes to the KBC, and it also generates two other voltages here which are higher output voltages that are only working when the laptop is powered on. There's no 5 volts always on power here, and I'm just a bit confused by that. Um, but look, we know that this is the IC that is producing the 3.3 volts always on power. It's a TPS 51225, and we need to take some measurements on that IC. Now we've already identified this as our main 19.5 volt power rail. But if we follow this down this track here, the whole way around the side of the motherboard, and down here, we locate our TPS 51225. Now I've already marked in the pins here for convenience, but what you can see is that our 19.5 volt comes in on a pin called V in. So we should be able to measure 19.5 volts to make sure that that's got an input there. The next ones we're concerned with are the VREG3, which should be our 3.3 volts always on, and VREG5, which should be uh, our 5 volts always on. So let's take some measurements for those now. I've put my multimeter into volts DC, my black probe is on ground at the USB port and I'm going to start taking some measurements. So first of all we want to measure that we're getting our V in voltage. So I place my probe to the nearest safe point which is on this capacitor which leads down to this pin right here. And When I place my probe here I measure that there's 19.5 volts. So our input is good. Now as we spotted earlier on the data sheet if this IC, this TP51225, has an input voltage, then it should be producing 3.3 volts always on on this VREG3. So the safest place to measure this is at this point here, which is connected to VREG3. So again, with my multimeter in volts DC, I place my probe to this point and we measure 3.29 volts. So that's 3.3 volts essentially. So it looks like the TPS51225 is giving us our 3.3 volts always on. The last check I want to carry out on this TPS51225 is just to measure the VREG5 and see what is showing up on this. So I place my probe once again to the nearest point to measure. So the pin is here and out from this you can see this capacitor here. So well, this gives us a good point to measure. I place my probe here and what I find is that it measures 0 0.300. It's measuring 300 millivolts and it was actually sort of cycling a small bit between 300 and 400 millivolts. I'm going to show you that now. This is a quick video of me taking measurement at VREG3 and VREG5. So first of all VREG3 it was difficult enough to get the probe in it but I measured 3.29 volts at that. So that's good. Then on the other side we crossed across to VREG5 and at that capacitor I'm measuring and what I measured was it was like measuring between 300 and 400 millivolts and it was cycling. At this point it seems like our TPS51225 has got the correct input voltage, is giving us the correct output voltage on VREG3, but not the correct output voltage on VREG5. So I did a quick check and verified that there was no short on this rail, and then I just decided it might be easier just to swap it out and see if that made any difference. So I decided to remove this IC and replace it with another one from stock. This is just a quick video of me removing the TPS51225. So coming in with my heat, melting the solder and lifting it off. And this is a video of me soldering in the new TPS51225. You'll see just where you heat it up it walks itself into position there. You just see it a couple of seconds ago. So that's it soldered in place. And then just push it a little bit, make sure that it comes back into position. Having replaced the TPS51225, I want to measure again and just make sure 
that we have vreg3 still and then check what is on vreg5 so placing my probe here to measure vreg3 i measure 3.29 volts so that's still good and vreg5 which had been cycling between about 300 and 400 millivolts we need to check that again so i place my probe to this capacitor here and i measure 5.10 volts so this is now online and we're measuring the correct 5 volts okay so we have confirmed that our TPS 51225 is generating our 3.3 .3 volts always on and our 5 volts always on so the next step is to check on the power button and see if we have our 3 volts there well the power button on this board is marked PWR1 I found it in the schematic and there's four pins on it there's two outer pins but there's three or sorry there's four pins here we've pin one which um, is 3D 3V underscore S5 we've pin two which is KBC underscore power button that's the one we're interested in so this is the one that sends the power button signal down to the KBC or super IO pin three is for lid close and pin four is ground so I've located that on the actual motherboard and this is where it is here I've marked in the pins so we've pin one we have our KBC power button we have our lid close and we have our ground so what I want to establish is just to make sure that we have voltage on this pin right here I introduce my digital multimeter in volts DC I place my black probe to ground and I place my red probe to the KBC underscore PWR button and when I do that I find that it measures 3.00 volts so it looks like we are getting the correct voltage on that KBC underscore power button pin so we've got the correct voltage on the KBC underscore power button pin but without the little daughter board which has the power button on it how do we power this on well what we can do is we can get something to connect KBC underscore power button to ground and what I do here is I connect it into tweezers and just simply do this connect the pins like this and then let go and that simulates pressing the power button so let me show you how I do that so this is a power connector that we were looking at on screen as we've established on pin 2 we have 3 volts which is our KBC underscore PWR button and we have four which is ground so we just need to jump or two of those together and see if it powers on so let me try that now okay we've certainly got an extra current drop so that means the super io is working oh wow and we have a screen so this is the usual message i get when i try and power it with my dc power supply it recognizes that it's not the correct power adapter and it just informs us of that but it looks like we've got a little working motherboard. That's my video for this week, guys. Please write any comments that you might have down below. I've just one little disclaimer at the end. I wanted to have more real world footage in this of me taking the measurements from the motherboard as I was doing them. However, when I tried to take the measurements of the 5 volt rail after I replaced the TPS 51225, this happened. So I crossed two of the capacitors and it blew up the TPS 51225 now I was fortunate that when I replaced it it did start working again but it made me reluctant to record any more of the measurements with my camera this week so I'm gonna need to build something with the camera to hold it but that's the reason that there isn't any more real-world footage in the video this week um, but that's all I got for this week I'll be back with another motherboard next week please like and subscribe and if you have any comments or suggestions just leave them in the boxes down below thank you